Bear Pro Pesto Foundation, great on spaghetti. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. Today we're doing a, I don't know if this is gonna be the last video in my ultimate clean foundation guide, but we're definitely going to be wrapping up this series. I hope you guys found this really helpful. If you haven't seen the other videos, I will link them up. I'll link them. I will link them below. I have a video about light, medium, and full coverage foundations. All the foundations that I own, I went over. Today's video, we're doing primers and powder foundations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's get started. I have my little notepad here. We'll try to do as many like texture shots and swatch type things for you guys. I will swatch the powder foundations and I'll put everything in my hand so you can get a feel of the texture. For me, I think that's helpful when I'm watching reviews, so I hope you guys find that helpful too. Um, let's just hop right into it. I'm going to start with two primers from 100% Pure. So I have both the Luminizing and the Mattifying Primer here from 100% Pure. You guys have probably heard me talk about the Mattifying Primer and I just recently got the Luminous Primer as well. So these are really interesting. These are silicone free primers, 100% Pure. They have really pure ingredients as the name suggests. Probably some of the cleanest, cleanest out of um, some that I'm gonna mention. They just have really great ingredients, really good skincare benefits in here. Uh, these are pretty pricey as well. The Luminous Primer is $39 and the Mattifying Primer is $49 for some reason. I thought they were gonna be the same price. But I'm gonna start with the Luminous Primer, which as I mentioned, it is newer to me. And this isn't like what I thought it was gonna be. It is like a light lotion-y texture but it has sort of a thick, I don't know how to describe it because they feel like they have silicone in them, but they don't. And for me, this primer, I wish it had more of a luminosity to it. I feel like it's not that different from the mattifying primer. It has a similar feel to it. It does have very fine mica in it, which is actually pretty nice because it's not too visible on the skin. But especially when you're putting foundation over this, I don't think it would really be luminous luminous enough to like show through your foundation. So I'm not completely crazy about this one from 100% Pure from the price of this. Like, I feel like there's better luminizing products. Maybe if you're doing a very sheer foundation, but that one's just, you know, it's okay. It has good ingredients if you want to pay that much for a better ingredient primer. They're definitely a good option. The mattifying one, I would say, is my favorite out of the two. I have mentioned this one before. It looks, it is clear. It looks exactly like a silicone primer and this one feels like so much like silicone. It's weird, but it is the glycerin in there that gives that, that sort of slip on your skin. And to me, this isn't super mattifying. So I feel like even if you have drier skin, like that would still work for you. It's not really like an oil absorbing primer. It is definitely just like a nice smooth base for makeup. I do really enjoy that one. That one is more expensive, $49. If you want to invest and you wanted something with better ingredients, I definitely think that one is nice. Again, Luminous one, not my favorite, but I do like the mattifying primer and I actually find makes my foundation look better. So for me, a primer, like it has to do something for me to want to use it. So that's definitely um, my little thoughts on the 100% pure ones. Next is a much more affordable option. This is the Physician's Formula Organic Wear Minimal minimal <laughs> mineral primer with cactus flower does come in a pump and it comes out white it almost looks like it's a sunscreen but this just feels like a face lotion almost and this retails for $15.99 I don't remember if I said that or not it has a really nice sort of feel to it to me this just feels like I'm putting on another layer of moisturizer I don't really think it does a lot for my foundation so this isn't my favorite either, like I just don't reach for it. I've used it a couple times, but other than that, I feel like it just doesn't do enough for me to want to like use it on my face. Um, that being said, if you have drier skin and you want like an extra layer of moisture, I think this would be nice because it does make your face feel really nice and just makes your foundation go on a little bit smoother. But yet again, I feel like uh, moisturizer does the same thing. So this is nice, more affordable, but just not my favorite. Back to the higher end of things, I have the Ilia Priming Serum here. It's their True Skin Radiant Priming Serum. This retails for $52, which is tied for the priciest primer I'm going to mention. This is supposed to moisturize and soothe the skin. It does have really good ingredients. I believe there's aloe, I think there's beta gluten. Um, just some nice skincare benefits. So this does come in a dropper bottle. This is, as the name suggests, a serum. 
so it's super liquidy. It does sink into the skin really nicely. It has a little bit of like a, I don't know what kind of scent, like it's kind of just like a neutral scent and it has some gold shimmer to it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me shake this because I forgot to. That's probably where all the shimmer is. Yeah, so it has a little bit of like a gold, a goldness to it, which is really pretty. It doesn't really show up that much on the skin. Uh, my thing with this primer is I really like that it has skincare benefits in this, but my thing with like serum primers is I'm wearing, if I'm doing my makeup, I'm wearing my skincare, I'm wearing a sunscreen, and then if I put something liquidy over it, I feel like it doesn't absorb into my skin and it does have a chance to pill. So like I do like that it has skincare properties, but the fact that I put it over a sunscreen, I know that it's not going to absorb into my skin just because there's much thicker layers already on my skin. So I feel like it's kind of, unless you're putting this on bare skin, I don't think it's like necessary to use this. If you don't wear anything else on your face and you want something like a nice priming base, I think it's nice for that. But for anybody who uses skincare or wears sunscreen, which you should, I don't think this is really a hit for me. You guys know I love Elia, but this is just one of the products that I don't think is really worth the money. I don't really get a ton of use out of it. I don't reach for it that much. You do have to let it set down too, or else it does, um, it pills pretty easily with other products. So you have to kind of pick and choose what you use with this. For $52, really not my favorite either. I do like how it has the really good skincare ingredients. It's like a serum for your skin. As I mentioned, I feel like it's just not absorbed in my skin. So what's the point, you know? Okay, and then next up, I have one. I tried this in my found beauty video. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll link it below. It's the 24 karat gold primer. This has hyaluronic acid, 98% natural, and this is silicone free. All the ones I have mentioned, I don't know if the Physician's Formula one has silicone in it, but all the ones I've mentioned so far are all silicone free. I do have some silicone based ones to mention. Onto this found one. So this is a clear gel and it has like little gold flecks in it, but as you blend it into your skin, they kind of get uh, smushed down and they're not visible on the skin. It just adds a nice glow. This is actually such a nice primer for the price. I wasn't expecting to like this. But it feels really refreshing on the skin at first and then it sort of dries down a little bit sticky which is nice because your foundation will really like um, adhere to it. Great ingredients, hyaluronic acid, like this compared to the Ilia one, like I like how this one has similar like skincare ingredients but this one I feel like is actually nice over thicker products like moisturizer and sunscreen because it has a thicker gel consistency so it really smooths everything out without silicone. Surprisingly like this for the price. Say how much is this? $10.88. Like I think this is a really nice primer if you did want one. I'll check this out. Um, it does have some preservatives, not like the super cleanest ingredients, but a good option. Moving on to my silicone based primers. This one I mentioned in my Sephora recommendation video. It's the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, which is new to me. This is the same price as the Elias um, Priming Serum. It's $52. You get this little scooper, which mine is just like cemented in there right now. <laughs> so you get to like scoop the product out. This is called a priming balm, which I really love the consisten consistency of this. Because it's a balm, you'd think it would be heavy, but it's really silky smooth. Like just like the name, it does have a really silky feel on the skin. This just blurs out pores, any lines, like imperfections. Like this is just beautiful. This is also one of those primers. I definitely see a difference in how my foundation and concealer looks. I like to use this under my eyes to prevent to prevent creasing and smooth it out and on my eyelids as well, just as like an eyelid primer. And I've been really enjoying this, especially with the concealer I've been using. I think it's just one of those like primers that yeah, it's pricey, but it actually does something and it actually makes your foundation and other products go on better and smoother. And there is some good skincare ingredients in here as well. If you don't mind the silicone, I would definitely recommend this one from Tatcha. It's been like probably my favorite primer at the moment. It's really excited about this product. I do enjoy using it and I reach for it a ton. Okay, lastly, I also mentioned these in my Sephora video, but these are from HelloFab, or from First Aid Beauty, the HelloFab line. Um, it's the Coconut Skin Smoothing Primey, Smoothie Primey? Smoothie Priming Moisturizer and then the Pores Be Gone with Thick Extract Oil Free Mattifying Primer. These are formulated for sensitive skin. 
Let's start with the Coconut Skin Smoothing Priming Moisturizer. So the difference with this one and the mattifying one, this one does have silicone in it, but it's one of the very, like, it's at the bottom of the list. And I think it is just, I, mean, I think it's just a dimethicone derivative. It's not actually dimethicone. If you want a really hydrating, moisturizing, like actually glowy primer, I absolutely love how this looks on the skin. It does have a light fruity scent, which I enjoy if you're sensitive to like any scents. Maybe not, but I'm pretty sure they are um, made with natural fragrance. Not 100% sure, but this one actually gives a really nice glow to your skin. In like contrast to the 100% pure luminous primer, like that one just doesn't give a glow that this one gives, which is why I definitely reach for this one more. The consistency is really nice. If you have like irritated or dry skin, this just feels super nice on the skin. It is more of a lotion-y consistency, so it sinks in really nicely. And oh yeah, it says no artif artificial fragrance, so... It is uh, natural fragrance in these. This one I really enjoy. I think it's like a cult fave primer, you know? I think anybody would like this. Maybe if you don't have super oily skin, but I still think it's a really nice, beautiful, glowy base for makeup. And those are $28. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. The next one is the mattifying primer. And as I mentioned, this one does have um, dimethicone as the second ingredient, so it's more silicone based. This is like a weight lotion. It's almost a similar consistency, but this one feels really um thicker on the skin it feels like it will really like sink into your pores and smooth them out it does like dry down but it's not like a super powdery mattifying primer like i think becca has one that's like crazy mattifying i remember trying it like a long time ago but this one it just leaves a really silky smooth base i think even if you have dry skin you could still use this like if you have combo skin like you could put it in your t-zone to control oil because I really don't think it's like crazy mattifying. That being said, if you have really oily skin, I don't think this is going to do a crazy amount of like oil control for you. Just going to give you a nice smooth base for makeup. I have like ink all over my hands. Ignore that. But yeah, this one, I think this one has a little bit of a stronger scent than the coconut one. It's more of like a fruitier scent. Again, I really enjoy them. But if you're sensitive to fragrance, just be aware of that. So those were those two from First Aid. I think also for $28, they're really nice primers. Okay, so that was all for our primers. Moving on to powder foundations. The first one I have is from Found. Their mattifying powder foundation. I have the shade Light 130, which is too dark for me. This is 988. It is a talc-free powder foundation. And it's probably hard to tell. I'll insert a separate swatch video for these. It's very yellow-based. This is actually such a beautiful powder foundation. If you want to see how it looks on my skin, you can watch my video when I tried this out. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see like how long it wore for because it's just totally not my shade. So it's kind of hard to wear it out. Maybe one day when I'm like not going out, I'll have to wear it all day and see how it wears. But this is really smooth, really nice. It doesn't look cakey and it gave a really um, nice amount of coverage. This was another surprisingly good product from this brand. If you're looking for an affordable option, I would try this one out. Okay, and the next one I have is from Bare Minerals. This is not their original foundation. It's the Bare Pro Pest... Pest. <laughs> Bare Pro Pesto Foundation. Great on spaghetti. Now, it's the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Pressed Foundation. This does have talc in it. Their original loose foundation, the mineral one, does not have talc in it. I have tried that one and I like it. It can look a little bit cakey. This one I really enjoy. It gives a nice amount of coverage. It doesn't look cakey. Usually I don't wear it on its own, but you can definitely wear it on its own because it's a medium to fuller coverage like powder foundation. And it feels super thin and light on the skin. So it's not going to look cakey or like feel super heavy. Like I feel like some powders can be heavy, especially if you layer them up. I have the shade Aspen 04. I will insert a little swatch here. This one I really enjoy. I mostly use this over my other foundations to add a little bit of coverage, like problem areas, or just to set my face. I think it lasts really well. As long as you don't do like a crazy amount, I think it looks relatively smooth and doesn't get cakey. And this one is $31 and you get 10 grams, 0.34 ounces. The found one is 0.28. So yeah, this one is a little bit bigger just for size reference does come with a little sponge in the bottom and you get a nice mirror. I like the compact. This is nice. One of my most used powder foundations. 
Um, I don't know if I mentioned, yeah, this does have talc in it. So if you don't want to use talc, obviously stay away from this one, but I wanted to mention it. Next is like one of my old fave powder foundations. It's the Alima Pure Loose Foundation. I have the shade Warm 2. This is $28. This is super beautiful on the skin. Doesn't look cakey. I use this sort of how I used um, the Bare Minerals one just to add extra coverage. I usually don't necessarily wear this on its own just because I feel like it can look a little bit heavy and cakey on the skin when you do a lot of layers of it. So I like to just stick to it as like a setting powder that adds coverage basically. I think this does have like rosehip oil in it to keep your skin moisturized. So if you have drier skin, you probably like this, but if you're kind of have normal to oily skin, you get like acne easily or just more congested skin, you might want to like stay away from this because that might be a little heavy on your skin. Again, not sure everyone's skin is different, but I really enjoy this. It's like an OG fave of mine, one of the first powder foundations I tried and super gentle on the skin, just beautiful powder. I have the pressed one from Elima Pura, which is my favorite. I definitely prefer over the loose version. I feel like this is a little bit of a different formula. You can tell I've used the freaking heck out of this. <laughs> I use the shade Ginger, which is not really exact match to Warm 2, but it is a warmer, fair shade. I feel like this formula is a little bit different. It doesn't look as cakey. Maybe because it's um, pressed, you get less of it on your brush and it's just easier to work with. This one is $34. And then the refills are $22 which I like that how they are refillable, save some money there. If you wanted like a cleaner version of the Bare Minerals Bare Pro one, this is like exactly that. Looks beautiful on the skin. Again, has that like rose hip complex, so it's really soothing and moisturizing. And this is like, again, one of my old faves. Really enjoy this, used it a ton. Next up we have the Well People Bio Based Baked Foundation. I have the shade Fair Golden. Um, not a ton of shades in this one, which is kind of disappointing. This one is definitely like my lighter shade now. Oh wow, that actually matches me real good. Yeah, so this is like a really nice match for my fair skin right now. It's a nice baked formula. This reminds me of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. Because it's baked, it has a little bit of like a sheen to it, which is really pretty. But for that reason, I wouldn't use this just on its own as a powder foundation. I feel like it doesn't have enough coverage for me to do that and it would end up looking cakey. So I just like to use this sort of as a setting powder or just to build coverage again on areas where you need it. I think it's really nice for that. This one is $28, so same price as the Alima Pure Loose one. I do like this. It's available at Target, so pretty available to any of you guys who have a Target. I do like this, but like I said, I wouldn't technically use it as a powder foundation. I would use it more as a setting powder because it can look cakey and sort of settle into lines. So yeah, that's the Well People one. All right, we've got two more to go. I have the Cloven Hollow Pressed Mineral Foundation in the shade 03. This is just like not my favorite. It doesn't really give off a lot of coverage. It's kind of rough feeling. And I don't know, there's something about this that I feel like it just doesn't look good. I never reach for it. I only have the loose pan because I didn't get the compact. For this loose pan is $24 and then you have to buy the compact for an extra $8. So it's not like included in the price. Like with the Alima Pure one, like you get this compact and then the re refill is like a separate thing, which I really like. So I just really don't reach for this. I don't think it really looks nice on the skin. It looks a little bit cakey and it just, it really doesn't have a lot of pigment to it. And for me to wear just a powder foundation on its own, it really has to have that pigment. So this is more of just like a setting powder. And I'm just not crazy about this. If you're looking for a actual powder foundation with coverage, I would not recommend this one. But I did want to mention it because it's a powder foundation video. Okay, last one is the Zuzu Lux Dual Powder Foundation. I have the shade D17. Again, weird shade range with this powder foundation. You could also find this one at Target. This one has a really, really nice amount of coverage. It's one of the oldest like powder foundations that I've tried. Like this is a new one, but I tried this like before I was even using exclusively like Clean Beauty. This is really nice. This is one of the powder foundations that it's not completely a flat matte. So it has sheen to it, which means that it is gonna accentuate texture a little bit more. So you have to be very light handed with that. But at the same time, it's not gonna make you look as flat or lifeless as like a total matte powder foundation would. 
really like the formula of these. This is $29.99, a little bit on the pricier side, but I think they are really nice. Wanted to mention it, available at Target, which is great. Again, weird shade range. I feel like I can't even find a shade that matches me, so keep that in mind. Maybe go in the store and see what they got. All right, guys, that was it for my primers and powder foundations video. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see any of the other videos in my clean foundation guide, I will link them below. Like I mentioned, I really hope you guys are finding this series helpful. Let me know if you want any other types of videos like this, if you want one on concealers, if you want one on blushes, bronzers. I think it'd be really fun to do like a whole base guide to just all my favorites, what's worth it, what's not. But yeah, thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video.